Today I'm going to be talking about some of my thoughts on contemporary politics, basically my thoughts on the regressive left and basically how the left is going too far. I have some ideas like how white supremacists or some form of this idea of white supremacy is infesting the far left, how the fight for equity is destroying equality, and how the left is, well, just going too far, as I mentioned. As a disclaimer, I think we as a society are in agreement for the most part that the far right has gone too far on many occasions, and because of fear and anger towards the far right, we have let the far left go unchecked. The goal of this video is to explain why I believe the left is going too far, and why it is imperative to call out this bad behavior. This video is in no way an excuse for the far right or for the horrific acts perpetrated by people who hold those views, and I hope all of you who are listening are willing to have an honest discussion about how it is possible to oppose the extremists on the far right and on the far left. And before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, Virtual Shield. Head over to hidewithtim.com and you can get what they say is the best VPN deal in the world for only $2.75 per month. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And what this service does for you is helps keep your browsing history private. It encrypts your internet data. I strongly recommend you do consider getting a VPN service because it is just one step you can do to help protect your private information and protect your family. For those that are interested, as I mentioned, hidewithtim.com and get your 30-day free trial today. One of the first things that I want to talk about is an idea of far-left white supremacy, which is not the exact same thing as far-right white supremacy, but I'm going to explain why I think it's at least some form of it. And I'm going to start just by telling you a story. I was once at this protest event where, after going to dinner, I met a young white social justice activist. We were sitting down over dinner with several people when I mentioned my having a meeting in the morning that I could not miss. He scoffed at me and said that the idea of a schedule was colonial thinking. This confused me, so I asked him what he meant. He told me that the idea of time and schedules was created by white Europeans and that I was stuck in a colonial mindset. He talked about how indigenous populations don't have these notions and that other cultures don't share the same idea of waking up and adhering to a schedule, that all of this was built by white people. Well, I explained to him that many cultures understood the concept of time and adhered to schedules, that it wasn't exclusive to white people. But he simply replied that all of this was because white people colonized these cultures and pushed these beliefs onto them. Specifically for me, he told me that Asians only followed a schedule because white colonists brought this concept to the Far East. This is just one anecdote, but trust me, there are many more. I've encountered many activists who tend to be white people on the far left who genuinely believe that the greatest accomplishments and the worst crimes have only been committed by white people. To me, this is essentially erasing the accomplishments and crimes of other cultures of which every human, every culture, every tribe in this world has done something that is considered wrong by today's standards. So I started to realize something as this person was lecturing me about how my heritage coming from the Far East was actually derivative of white colonists. I realized that this is some kind of new idea, this new kind of white supremacy. Here I am sitting in front of a white man who identifies as a far left activist, genuinely believing that not only did white people create most basic concepts like time and a schedule, but that they are supreme that my ideas and cultures are derivative of their culture. Now, let me clarify what this means. This isn't a group of people who think that white people should be supreme, as how we traditionally define white supremacist, but a group of people who think that white people are supreme, that they hold power and are above all other races in terms of access and privilege. To hear from so many people associated with the far left that the idea of white privilege extends beyond Western colonization, but actually affects the accomplishments of East Asia and the Middle East, was actually rather shocking to me, because anybody who knows even a little bit about history knows that there are great accomplishments across all cultures around the world. White supremacist is typically defined as someone who believes the white race is inherently superior to other races, and that white people should have control over people of other races. But many people associated with the far left share at least half of that belief. 
To be told that your culture only exists because of white people, to me, might not be the same as our colloquial understanding of white supremacy, but it is something drastically similar. And while this isn't representative of all activists on the far left, obviously, it is an idea that in my experience has extended among many activists and many of those who are white on the far left, seemingly paradoxically, white people who oppose racism but genuinely believe that they, that their culture, that their ethnicity is dominant and holds more power and privilege than any other. And this becomes a particularly dangerous paradox when you have white people who believe that they do have the majority of power and privilege but then demand minority groups adhere to their ideology because they know better. And we have seen instances where mixed race and minority people were physically attacked by white anti-fascists. Again, I'm not trying to act like this is every single anti-fascist or every single leftist or even everyone on the far left. Just that there are much too many people who associate with what we call the far left that genuinely believe these things. And I don't know how to quantify how many people that is, but I have encountered enough of them to where it has really soured my understanding of these activists. Now, it's basically a meme among my followers that I mention my being mixed race because I have pointed it out on several occasions, but there is a reason why I do this. Among the far left, when I agree with them, they will use my minority status to their advantage. But when I disagree with them, they will accuse me of just being another white man. My principles, my thoughts, my intentions, they mean nothing. And this extends to a much larger problem where many people associated with the far left are trying to make everything political. Simple video games and movies become political statements, and then we see movies get negative reviews from critics because they didn't like that it may have glorified some concept. Like the movie Death Wish. The movie wasn't overtly pro-gun, it wasn't talking about the right to own guns, and the main character actually illegally obtained guns. Yet critics were so quick to lambast this movie, saying that it was a gun-nut fantasy, They actually gave the movie a bad review for political reasons that had nothing to do with the movie. And this plays into something that Dave Rubin said recently. He tweeted out that they want you to bow forever. Because it doesn't matter what your principles are. It doesn't matter if you oppose racism. It doesn't matter if you agree with them. It simply matters if you are willing to let them have the power and stand down. Now, the issue might not even really be left or right, but that's how we describe it politically. The issue is more so the skewing towards authoritarian. The idea that you have the right to impose your rules on someone else without their consent. From a libertarian perspective, and I mean little l libertarian, typically people agree to make changes or abide by some rule. And I think it's true that we actually try to make the world more fair, even though it really isn't. We want people to believe that we as a society will do our best to create a balanced standard of living. However, complete fairness may never be possible because there's always going to be a margin of error. There will always be an innocent person wrongly accused or imprisoned or just plain bad luck. But we do try. In trying, we have created programs to help those we feel are disadvantaged. These programs can make sense. If someone is disabled, for instance, we ask new businesses to make their locations accessible. If one part of our city is crumbling and in ruins, we will allocate tax revenue from wealthier areas to fix the roads and schools. Another area where I think the left is going too far is on the issue of identity politics and equity policies. As people on the left begin to demand equity, we see these programs actually begin to dissolve. The protections we fought for to help those less fortunate are being erased. At Brown University, for instance, students are now able to self-identify as persons of color. And because of the trans issue, biological males are now being granted the right to compete against biological females. And it is a scientific fact that biological males are typically stronger, faster, and likely going to win in a physical competition. It was only about a week ago that two trans women won a girls' track meet. Janice Turner tweeted, Two male-bodied transgender runners came in first and second. What do you say to the girls who train so hard but can never win, yet can't even say this is not fair? I think there's a reason that we separate men's sports from women's sports. Men are likely to run faster, jump higher, and lift more. But when we allow male-bodied people to compete against women, it's unsurprising that they're actually going to win. And what does that say to women who do train hard and do want to win? They are competing against biological males. And in most circumstances, it is unlikely that they will win. Of course, it's not absolute. Females can absolutely beat males, but it is a significant disadvantage. So creating a female sports division is a protection granted to women so that they can challenge themselves among their peers. 
but that's actually being dissolved. And this isn't the only example. There have been many examples of trans women who are biologically male competing against biological females and winning. What's happening with Brown University might be an isolated incident or it might expand. We have seen some people claim that they're transracial and try to assert their right to certain programs. And if that trend continues, it is very safe to say the left is going too far and people need to call them out because programs exist for those who actually need it, not those who just think they do because they feel like they're oppressed. In some of the discussions I've had with people on the far left, they talk about how the far right is just too dangerous and that's why they're not focused on what the far left is doing. They talk about murder and terrorism. And honestly, that's true. That is a serious problem and it is really bad. But simply because one extreme might be worse than the other doesn't mean we ignore the problems coming from the left. I have no problem calling out the far right. And I think, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, most people have no problem calling them out because we recognize that murder and torture is terrifying and wrong. And most people in this country, the overwhelming majority, will be quick to call out blatant racism because these are things we do not like as a society. Now, in these regards, I've talked about my personal experiences, my frustration with white people on the left who claim to oppose racism, but actually are fairly racist and act in a rather demeaning manner to mixed race or minority people. But I was curious as to what is an actual sign that we can all agree on that the left is going too far, because I don't think everyone does. So I actually tweeted to Mike Stutchbury. Mike Stutchbury is a historian and a teacher who talks a lot about Antifa and issues in politics. I asked him what he thought was a sign that the left had gone too far, and he said it might be the forceful appropriation of resources. I don't want to insinuate that this was a well-thought-out or definitive statement, but simply a suggestion that we didn't really explore beyond that. But with his suggestion, I started thinking, maybe that is a good point. Dr. Jordan Peterson says that it's when the equity doctrine is put in place. And that may be true. I think the idea of when things have gone too far is going to differ based on an individual perspective. But one thing's for sure, when people start forcefully appropriating resources, I think we can pretty much all agree that's a big problem. And this has actually happened. In 2017, at Evergreen State College, activists forcefully took over the school. The police were ordered to stand down. And activists even accused a progressive professor, Brett Weinstein, of being a racist. Brett has spoken at length about the need to combat intrinsic racism, but his actual progressive beliefs are meaningless when confronted by authoritarians. They refuse to listen. They did not care about his ideas, his intentions, or his principles. This protest acted only under the guise of anti-racism, but had no intention of understanding and agreeing with Brett as he actually spoke out against racism. A group of students was actually said to be patrolling the campus with baseball bats, and a shaky video provides some evidence that they may have actually been violent. Windows were smashed, and faculties were held against their will. In an interview with Vice News, the president of Evergreen actually refused to deny that he was a white supremacist. Most reasonable people in this country would absolutely deny being a white supremacist. Now, I don't know why this man would refuse to state clearly and confidently that he is not a white supremacist. It could be because at heart, he really does believe that white people are the supreme race and he has a right to control other races. Or it might be that he is acting under political duress, that if he speaks out against these violent activists, he will face more violent protests. Whatever the reason, Evergreen State has capitulated to the protesters' demands. Ultimately, Brett and his wife, Heather Hying, resigned. The whole incident is an example of forceful appropriation of resources. Evergreen is a state college that was forcefully taken over by activists that forced people out, pushed people around to the point where the president won't even deny being a white supremacist. Following this, we have seen brigades against businesses on the internet because they refuse to deny service to calm and peaceful patrons. People have been fired from their jobs for no wrongdoing simply because activists felt slighted. And as I just mentioned, schools have actually been taken over by force 
and anti-racist progressives have been forced out of their jobs. When we talk about the left going too far, we can point out the forceful appropriation of resources, but I think it's also important to point out that we're breaking down actual paths towards equality, that we're breaking down programs that are meant to lift up marginalized voices, and we are losing our progressive professors who actually advocate combating intrinsic racism. Now, I really could go on and talk about many more examples, but I just wanted to hit three points, many of which are just my opinions based on my experiences, and you can absolutely say I'm wrong. This video is absolutely far from perfect. I just wanted to produce this opinion piece about some of the problems I've been seeing. And one of the main reasons is that I got to admit, I am absolutely sick of these people on the far left who are white people who claim that white people hold all of this power and then use the shield of anti-racism to attack those who actually are minorities, who have actually experienced violence at the hands of white supremacists. Ultimately, it doesn't matter if this is a problem of the left. These things I've pointed out are simply instances of bad behavior that should be called out regardless of what the politics are. And I just want to end again by saying I've probably missed many, many things. There's so much that I probably didn't talk about that could be talked about, and I'm sure a lot of you have ideas, so feel free to comment below on your thoughts on the matter. And again, if you think I'm wrong, comment below, and I will look through your comments, and I'll respond. If you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at TimCast. Stay tuned, new videos every day at 4 p.m. I don't usually make videos like this, but every so often. So I appreciate all of you for listening. Stay tuned, and I will see you all again tomorrow.